Alright, welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. In this video tutorial, we are going to take a look at why you should use Bridge as opposed to just your regular file browser. So, this tutorial is going to be a wee bit different than our other tutorials here on tutvid.com. It will still have uh, quite a few tips and tricks, and you'll probably learn uh, quite a few things about the bridge in this tutorial, but the main focus of the tutorial is really on why you should use bridge and a lot of the great features bridge has to offer without getting into a lot of detail as to what those features are. So let's get into that. First thing I would like to point out is those of you that recall using Adobe Photoshop CS, under the file menu there was this option called file browser and when you press that a file browser popped up and it was Adobe's own file browser and it was really great it had all kinds of features a lot of those features show through into the bridge um, but the big problem with it was you could only use it with Photoshop you couldn't use it with InDesign you couldn't use it with Illustrator uh, or any of those other Creative Suite programs so a lot of the people that use Creative Suite wanted it for all of the applications in the Creative Suite. So Adobe created the bridge. And that's exactly what we're going to go over here. Now, first thing you probably need to know is whether or not you actually have the bridge. And the bridge is included with CS2. If you bought the Creative Suite, you have it. Or if you've bought any of the CS2 products, standalone products that is, InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, etc., etc., it's with all of them. And it even comes with Photoshop Elements, starting with Photoshop Elements 4. I believe. So if you have any of those programs, you have the bridge as well. It comes as an extra uh, in there. Okay, so let's look at some of the reasons you should actually use the bridge here. The bridge is really easy to access. It's actually easier to access than your regular file browser. If I were to have a window with all of my files in it open on the side, uh, the bridge would be a lot like that, but it's a lot like that plus more. There's a lot more you can do with the bridge than a regular file browser, your operating system file browser, that is. So, real quickly, we're going to take a look at accessibility for the bridge, and I'm going to close the bridge here, and behind that I have Photoshop opened up. Now, if, you're, if I'm working in Photoshop, I've got an image open, and I realize I need something out of the bridge, and the bridge isn't open, well, I don't have to go and dig out the shortcut or go back to my desktop and hit my computer if I were to use my regular file browser and dig through files that way. I don't have to come up and hit open. All I have to do is up here in the top toolbar, there's this folder with the bridge shell on it, and it also has a magnifying glass. If we press that, it's going to open the bridge. And there we have it. The bridge is open, and it's real quick, it's real easy, and it's much faster than going and digging out your file browser. Um, that's one quick advantage. You could also just have the bridge automatically open with Adobe Creative Suite programs. Um, I have mine set to automatically open, like when I open Photoshop, because there's hardly a time when I'll use Photoshop when I will not use the bridge. The bridge is something I virtually always use whenever I'm doing any kind of design work. So it's great to be able to have that open automatically, but if you don't want it to open automatically, you can still access it very quickly and very easily by just clicking that button up in the toolbar. Now, one of the immediate advantages you will notice that the bridge has over any operating system browser, that is its previews it has numerous previews and for many different file types than any browser offers for instance right here I have everything from PSDs to Nikon camera raw files to PDFs I even have a couple movie files in here and everything gets previews I've got a PSD I've got Illustrator files I have InDesign files everything and not only does it give you this preview which you can adjust by using the thumbnail slider here but you can also preview it in the preview panel over here, which I can extend to make the preview bigger. Now, you may be asking yourself, why bother to use a preview panel if I can just make the thumbnails bigger? Well, the preview panel has advantages with movies. If I select this .mov file here, I've got .avi and a .mov file, and both of them I can get previews. You can actually play through the movie here, and the same thing with sounds. You can play through sounds, 
and with PDFs, multi-page PDFs, you can scroll through the pages using the little arrows that show up at the bottom of the preview panel. So there's a lot of previewing options here and for many, many more file types than any operating system browser will give you. So that's one huge advantage that the bridge has over a file browser, as you can really see what you're going to get before you even open the file. So that's time saving and it's just really great, something I really like about the bridge. And another great thing about the bridge is any files you want in any program, all you have to do is simply grab the file, drag it and drop it into your document and obviously if your bridge window is covering your entire document window, I'm going to drag off screen for a second down to my toolbar, I'm going to hold my mouse with that image dragged in on top of Adobe Photoshop down on my taskbar, it's going to make Adobe Photoshop the primary window and I'm going to drop it in there and it's going to open it up for me. So just like that, you can quickly get images opened up, dragging and dropping right from Bridge to whatever program you're using. It doesn't necessarily have to be Photoshop. Okay, but the Bridge is not just a program that makes viewing your images and dragging them into programs easy. There's way more that you can do with the Bridge. You can organize your files much, 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 much more than you can with regular operating system browser. Matter of fact, with an operating system browser, you really can't organize your files much beyond loading them into named folders and then you can run searches later using Windows Search or whatever. Well, the bridge allows you to assign all kinds of information to your images. Okay, here we have metadata. I can come down and any of these metadata fields with the pencil next to them, I can click and edit. So I can put phone numbers in here, I can put instructions, I can put copyright information, I can put all kinds of things in here and save it. And another thing I can do is assign keywords to these images. So that's a helpful thing when you are searching your images. And not only is there metadata and keywords, but you can also select images. Let's say I like this beach photo, I like the rooster photo, I like the shovel photo, and I like the dog photo. You can label your images using a five star to one star rating. I'm going to give these five stars just as an example. And you can also color code them. So I'm going to give these a green color code. Now I'm going to select a couple more images here and I'm going to give them a three star rating and a yellow color code. Now, the really neat thing about this is I can now come up here to view or excuse me, label, no, it is view, here we go, sort, and I can sort by not only file name or document type or date created or file size, but I can sort by the label or my rating. So if I sort by my rating, you can see that my five star ratings go to the bottom here, and my three star ratings are right after that, and everything without a rating goes above that. I'm going to hit uncheck ascending order and you're gonna see now my five star images are at the top but we can also view and sort by label and that's going to sort us out by our la our colored labels and I'm going to check ascending order and there we go all of our greens are at the top all of our yellows are coming after that and then all the unlabeled stuff just follows after that in a different order so that's a couple of the ways you can sort images and really control where your images are and find them very very easily later on and even in times when you don't have your own image Adobe Bridge also has a solution for that and it's called Adobe Stock Photos now Adobe Stock Photos is a huge online marketplace of a bunch of stock photography agencies um, and it's a big online directory you just search right here within Bridge enter a keyword search and a bunch of stock photos will pop up you just pick the one you want, you can purchase it then, you can download a comp, you can do whatever you want with it, and it's just thousands and thousands of stock photos right here at your fingertips. You don't even have to open a web browser to get to them. So that's very, very nice. It's a very useful feature, Adobe Stock Photos. Um, and something else that the bridge does, and one of my favorite things about the bridge, is it allows you to make sure all of their colors throughout the entire creative suite are synced. 
okay so you're using the same color space in InDesign as you are in Photoshop and the same in Photoshop as you are in Illustrator etc 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 now if your colors are not synchronized this color wheel will appear all messed up the colors will be in different places and this top right hand piece of the pie if you would will be out of place so this is a very nice feature you can just click on this and select your color settings and then hit apply to apply them and once you're synced it's going to tell you you're synchronized down here in the color management section so that's a very cool thing that the bridge does it allows you to make sure your colors are staying proper colors and that you're getting the same colors system wide the bridge also allows you to edit its appearance and by appearance I mean these palettes you can stretch these panes and palettes and you can move them around and combine them or whatever you want with these panes here you can collapse the panes I've got a whole tutorial on just editing bridges workspace but it also allows you to save workspace and you can see here I could save this as my workspace but it also has a bunch of default workspaces light table which you can see here it doesn't do much until I there we go it's just your thumbnails go back up to workspace we can do metadata focus it's gonna pull up our metadata section here so if we're entering a bunch of metadata we might want to use this view and there's a whole bunch of other really useful workspaces as well you can create and save your own if you need one that is gonna suit your needs um, you can just create it custom and save it and anytime you need it go up into workspace or window excuse me workspace and then come down and your custom ones will be down here at the bottom the next thing I'm going to point out is in bridge a very very cool feature is bridge under tools you have these different programs in this case Photoshop Illustrator and InDesign and basically all of these here are automated tasks that normally you would have to open Photoshop Illustrator or InDesign to get to but you can apply them from right here within the bridge for instance I could do a merge to HDR if I had a bunch of 16-bit raw images here if I want it right here from within bridge and it would open the necessary programs and do everything I need I could do a photo merge I could batch process several folders I could create a web photo gallery you know for Illustrator I could export to flash I could live trace there's so much you can do right here from within bridge and it's really really nice and normally you would need to open those files in the program and then perform that script or whatever from right there within Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign depending on what you're working on but with bridge you can do it right from bridge just by selecting the file so that's just the tip of the iceberg there's so much more you can do with bridge bridge is just an absolutely useful super useful program and it's a real time saving program so you know take what you've learned here and go out try using bridge and as soon as you start using it you'll realize how much time you save you realize how easy it is to use and how well organized you can keep your work and I can almost guarantee you, you will not be disappointed so that's it for this one that's pretty much the basics of why you should use bridge and uh, hope you've learned something from it I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you go check out the site that is www.tutvid.com for more video tutorials. Thanks for watching.